All right, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual set to compete at Ryzen 40, which goes down on New Year's Eve. An intriguing flyweight fight with John Dodson and Hideo Takoro getting out there into the ring and happy to be welcoming John onto the show for the first time. How's your day going so far, man? Man, my day's going amazing. I've been got down doing wrestling, making sure we can go ahead and get ready for these head south suck kicks and kneeing the fools in the ground. I was going to say that leads right into something I wanted to talk about. I feel like a lot of the combat sports fans on Twitter were especially excited about that. Like, oh, we get to see John Dodson throw soccer kicks potentially and stuff like that. Like, it seems like you're excited about that too. Is that fair? Absolutely, because my wild acrobatics, I can go ahead and maneuver around this guy and land my knee perfectly on his face or be doing some crazy face, like face stops. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can count me as someone that was also very excited seeing that too. But something that's also interesting about this event is it being a New Year's Eve event and there's like such a rich tradition of combat sports in Japan on that day. Is that something that you've like regularly checked out over the years? Like, is, does it feel cool to be kind of like interwoven into that a little bit? Absolutely, because I always wanted to sit there and just experience more of a Japanese culture. I can't even lie to you. I'm one of those weebs who won't sit there and watch a ton of anime. and just like immerse myself like so much into like the anime life that I was like, oh man, being out there in Japan, being able to go ahead and do the exact same thing and kind of bring my and bring my wife out with me, something that both of us can enjoy together. Oh, that's cool. So there's a bit of like a family dynamic going there. Like, will you be staying a bit after New Year's Eve to kind of like do some touristy stuff, or what are you thinking? I wish we could, but we have to get back to our kids because the kids. I'm coming with me for the journey of this one. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. No, but it's been a very exciting year for you, it seems like. Like, you got back on track in the MMA win column there, and then the successful bare-knuckle debut, and we're talking about, like, the Ryzen debut you're readying to close out the year with, and I'm just kind of wondering, like, is it very, I guess, creatively stimulating to be able to fight under these multiple different rule sets? I would think it would be. Oh, absolutely, because of the fact that bare-knuckle sets and unique unique kind of de- like a unique problem for me because of the fact that we're punching people without gloves I have to continuously clinch with somebody and then try to destroy them by just using the, my bare knuckles and boxing skills everyone continues to thought I wasn't being able to that same creative knockout artist I used to be and I show the potential that I had I guess where I'm going and then just like that aforementioned context there like where would this year I guess, rank for you maybe as compared to some previous years as a pro fighter? Like, it seems like you've gotten to do a lot of really intriguing stuff this year. I tell you the truth, it feels like I'm back being at square one. Guy coming in, trying to be, make a name for himself, making a splash all around the world in different, like, combat sports. Like, when I was, before I even thought about doing MMA for a full-time job, I bounced around doing boxing, kickboxing, a bunch of grappling tournaments, and I got back to my roots. And that's the same thing I'm doing now come back into the real love of the sport being able to, to immerse myself fully into it and trying to just find my my zen my center point in mixed martial arts again yeah and i was seeing before the bkfc debut there you were promising like a very violent entry into everything like you're coming out there looking to punish do you think you kind of followed through with that because i mean from my layman perspective it seemed like you very much did that oh well, i did i made sure i came out telling everybody the truth that i'm gonna be more vicious and be willing to break my hands. So even in this fight coming up next, I make sure I can display more than just my knockout ability. I want to be able to scramble and put on a, a show for the Japanese crowd and be able to secure a, a submission. That's what I'm actually looking forward to. I'm planning out to sub a jiu-jitsu artist. <laughs> Yo, that'd be a great way to close out the year. Certainly like a multifaceted kind of you know, offering all around there. But something I thought was kind of interesting, I saw Corey Anderson tweet this out. He thought it was interesting that, you know, Demetrius Johnson and yourself both had big performances on the same day with him, you know, garnering the one belt. And then you had like a big victory as well. And you were like, oh yeah, that's crazy. And I thought that was kind of interesting because it sort of ties into really like the last time you fought at flyweight there, just that, you know, title bid against DJ in September 2015 like how different is the preparation for this one just getting back to 125 like what's the differences fighting in this division as compared to you know bantamweight the last couple of years well i'm going to go back and start winning again like bantamweight was like a, such a i want to say like, like a terrible run for me but i i felt like i just giving up so much size and trying to go ahead and compete with these dudes 
and I kept on like making myself put bring a lot of self doubt. Going back to Flyway, I knew I know I'm a champion. I'm a guy who's a force to be reckoned with. The only person that ever beat me was Demetrius Johnson, and I'm just going to continue on that run, doing the exact same thing. Like I want to rise to success, and I want to do it the best way, fashion, and I want to close out my fighting career in doing so. And I guess I'm kind of curious with this being the debut with Ryzen, like, is this kind of like a like a one fight agreement for now and see where it goes, or is it maybe more of like a multi fight kind of arrangement? That's a multi fight arrangement. We've been trying to go ahead and fight with Ryzen since I got let go out of the UFC. Like, um, opportunity for me to go ahead and share the same spotlight with Horaguchi because he was actually a potential opponent that I was originally supposed to fight. When I got let go of the UFC and then the borders got shut down in Japan and then he got signed to Bellator and all this, everything else kept on. We were like whining and self twisting and turning and here I am now fighting this team. Yeah, and obviously not overlooking this opponent, but with it being a Bellator versus Ryzen event and Horiguchi kind of being tied up in that, like would I guess an idealistic bout in 2023 at some point be, you know, fighting Horiguchi? It sounds like you're intrigued by that. I'm excited to fight anyone to tell you the truth like I want to fight for the title and I want to become a champion at in like Aaron Rice 125 135 potentially that's like where I'm going to be bread and butter and I want to be able to go ahead and destroy these young uppercomers who think that they can go ahead and take the uh, mass loan from me and sit there and try to put a name for themselves <laughs> And would you mostly be focusing on MMA action or maybe concurrently doing bare knuckle boxing with MMA in 2023? I'm going to be doing both. I'm not going to like shy away from every, any type of fighting style right now because of the fact that, well, time is not on my side. I have to continue on fighting the exact same way that I've been doing for many years before, but I just want to get as many fights as possible so that I can go ahead and be happy with my life afterwards. Yeah, it seems like one of the more exciting times to be a competitor within combat sports. It just seems like there's such like a multiplicity of options and like more wiggle room with co-promoting and, you know, being with a certain promotion, but they'll maybe allow you to fight in like a different league, like even different sport. I would think that would be exciting for you just being that you've competed for a while. Well, absolutely. I can't even wait to go ahead and like dive into actual boxing. I mean, Jake Paul's been sitting there making such a, a unique run at beating up a bunch of MMA fighters. I mean, what about some guys that other YouTube sensations that want to go ahead and fight other MMA fighters? MMA legends. I'll be able to go ahead and fight like Dean the Great or whoever else that keep on throwing uh, their names in the hat, making it seem like they're uh, these amazing fighters from top at athletes. And I'll just show everybody that I'm the best in the world. doesn't matter what kind of fighting style it is. I'm a combat athlete. I'm one of the best in the world, and I can get, do it with whoever and whatever they want. Even if I have to do that slap jiu-jitsu, <laughs> yeah well i feel like you'd kind of fit like a perfect confluence with that because you obviously have like a deep fighting pedigree but like you seem to have always had like a lot of like personality and i feel like you could really handle like that end of things too so that's interesting that you're kind of looking at that i think that would be a great fit as well yeah me too because i would my i would love to tell my kids i slap the shit out of somebody it's a submission <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's about just kind of trying out as many different, you know, disciplines as you can and stuff like that, eh? I mean, would combat jujitsu be something you'd be interested in? I guess I'm just thinking of, like, different disciplines that you could potentially do at this point. Yeah, I'm actually down to do combat jujitsu. Uh, Glory hit me up, so wanted me to try to join in a flyweight tournament, and that one did not fall through. Uh, that fell through. That didn't go through as planned. And, like, I'm down to go do straight boxing, like, with actual boxing gloves and have their rule sets and figure it out because boxing is a different art in itself and I just want to try to, to embrace the fact that I can go ahead and do so many because by being tied up with the UFC I was only allowed to do MMA fights and only with that promotion and now since I can go ahead and just bounce wherever I like to man this kind of having this freedom makes me feel more of a man <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean it's yeah. like understanding that I can go ahead and just be able to play around and be more youthful and be excited and actually fighting. Just wondering when do I potentially get another fight? This is like, I can weigh my options and I can go do this and go do this or pick that one and just try it out. Yeah, for sure. And then kind of just like a couple more BKFC related kind of things, just because I thought it was cool that, you know, Eric Dodson also got the victory on the same card too. Like, how cool was that to sort of share in your own individual moments on that night? I would think that would be like a special kind of thing. 
I felt amazing because the fact that me and my brother have been just cornering each other for so many fights that we had to share the night and the same night together and have the same type of victory. Granted, he did beat me because he knocked his dude out in 23 seconds and I knocked mine out in 40. <sighs> I just <laughs> call that to me having a better opponent who wanted, who was willing to stand back up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I guess one more thing that I thought was interesting, like obviously a different combat sport, but with like Johnny Bedford being like the BKFC Bantamweight champion there and having fought him on the Ultimate Fighter circa like November 2011 there. I mean, we were talking about like kind of eyeing like a Horiguchi fight and the title implications there and all that. Would there be a similar kind of focus on maybe capturing BKFC gold? Like is that sort of the path there or maybe just like the actual immersion in the sport and competing is more the focus and then if a belt comes like that's cool like what's the dynamic there no i'm trying to make sure i can collect as many titles as possible so 2023 is, is my year to go ahead and collect gold and i want to put as many belts around my waist and top my shoulders across my knees my ankles anything that they want to rise above i want to be a good champion in whatever organization that they want to throw me into and collect every single type of belt so bkfc they can give me as many belts as they want rising they can give me as many belts as they want and hell, hell, if they want to give me a, a glory belt or a boxing belt, like the WBC, WBC, oh, I'm down to go fight any of those dudes, too. Yeah, and you'd think with, like, a promotion like Ryzen, too. I mean, like, other promotions, too, like Bellator and stuff do it, but, like, Ryzen with, like, the Grand Prix kind of structures, I think a Grand Prix title would be cool, too. Oh, absolutely, because I want to have a big old giant trophy that I have to figure out how to transport its customs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I did want to talk about this upcoming opponent you have here in Ryzen. I mean, he's a guy that just has such, like, a depth of experience and whatnot. Like, what were the, I guess, first thoughts when this bout offer initially came your way? Like, man, I'm fighting a heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, you gotta remember, Heidel is the only, only fighter in MMA history to fight in seven different weight classes. He's out there, gone through flyweight, all the way up to, like, light heavy, I believe, and he sat there fighting the best. They fought Hoist Gracie, Hanzo Gracie, and uh, Kron Gracie. So they all gone through everything. So he's a phenomenal submission artist. He fought Horror, Gucci, he fought everybody from top to bottom. Like anybody who's who, like who's who in the MMA world, he fought them. Yeah, I mean, such an incredible resume as you outlined there. Just, I mean, a real who's who that he's fought there. I guess, like, stylistically, like, what do you find intriguing that he brings to the table? Like, I guess, what would you say his, like, I guess best attributes would be? Like, obviously, the experience is really there, but, like, stylistically, what would you say some of his better, I guess, attributes would be? His better quality is going to be his grapple. I know I'm going to be faster. I'm going to hit way harder than he does. And when it comes to the wrestling aspect, he's going to be probably just as tricky as I am. Or two unique puzzles when I don't like to get taken down. He loves to try to pressure people to either fall down himself to create a, some, like an arm bar and a MMRI roll type of situations. But I love to go ahead and just crush people's souls by hurting them physically by either violent slams or with my, my punching and kicking. I want to see if I can how, trick him into running to my knee before I choke him out with a triangle choke or a naked choke. Yeah, and you did mention wanting to get a submission earlier, so I feel like that would be really cool to net a submission over somebody, you know, of that kind of caliber, like someone whose submission skills you respect. Oh, absolutely. I like I fear this guy's submissions, but that's been making me try so much harder to go ahead and uh, to dive in more. I've been doing a lot more grappling scenarios and making sure that we can go ahead and play in all the areas where it be D and no key. <laughs> Yeah, for sure, and you obviously seem very excited about, like, MMA competition and the grappling facets, but, like, I do interview a lot of BKFC fighters who also have had previous MMA experience, and they talk about it being, like, a fair bit easier on the body in terms of, like, the training preparations. Did you notice that in your bare-knuckle camp, or, like, how was that? No, my bare-knuckle camp was still in MMA camp. I sat there training with all my MMA fighters, making sure we did everything from day in and day out. Nothing really changed besides me. Did you know you have to hit mids? all the time i admit five times a day or five times a week well i guess that makes sense i mean you're still like looking to compete in both sports so you're probably still actively drilling a lot of like grappling and not really putting it on the back burner like maybe some other bkfc guys are well not necessarily like I, I, since i'm coaching and teaching all i'm training like my up-and-coming fighters making sure that they're going to be the future generation of fights like fighters come to come through 
I want to make sure I can keep in line and make sure that we can go ahead and be as creative and be as active as possible. I want to find the unique scenarios where people aren't really using them and abusing the situation so that we can go ahead and dominate in those areas. Yeah, you talk about like training people and like imparting knowledge to them. Like, how important is it to you to like pay it forward and stuff like that? And I guess also as an extension of that, how much does it also even further inform your understanding of different techniques, like teaching it to people and all that? Well, like I said back in like early in this interview, like I'm becoming more creative and become back into like the fall in love with the sport is because I'm teaching. Teaching allows me to go ahead and be as, as creative and trying to go ahead and show my students that I can continue on doing it and that it actually works. I'm not wanting to teach them some, some things that they think is total bullshit. So if I can go ahead and prove that it works, then it, <clears throat> their phone is lying that I have to show my creativity flow and flourish through their expectations as well. Yeah. <laughs> No worries, but I was just going to ask because you're talking about like creativity in terms of like the actual, you know, competitive framework there. Are you going to, you know, maybe show a little bit of that creative side with like the entrance there? Because I feel like with like the whole like New Year's Eve shows in Japan, like some people very much like have that as like a big part of like their entrance, like a bit of a flashy, like pageantry minded kind of thing. Are you looking at that at all or maybe not so much? Yeah, I was looking into it because I was with my wife was a baby. Uh, you're going to come out there and we're all going to straight dance and all the way out there. You can throw whatever onesie you want. We're going out there. And she's like, no. I was like, yes. Yes, we are. You are going <laughs> to be a part of this highlight reel of us becoming a united, but destroying people. <laughs> we're going to be like Godzilla in this place. She's like, no, John. I was like, yes, we are. They're going to be like, ah, Godzilla. But they're going to be like, ah, Mr. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to that. But one last thing I wanted to touch on, a bit of a random one, but I thought it was cool. You seemed excited about meeting Neo. Like, how did that all come about, like, getting to meet him? Uh, actually, you know what? Neo was coming into town, and my wife was the one who actually was like, hey, I, we are, I'm bugging. we got to figure out how to get there. We're going to go do that. And I was like, all right, cool. We'll go to the concert. And then we actually end up going to a private dinner with him. And that's how we got a chance to meet him and talk to him. And that was, like, more exciting for me. Well, for, for both of us, because both of us are huge Neo fans. I can't like, tell you how many times I've had my heart broken, and I listen to his music to help me cope through a lot of pains and heartbreak, heartaches. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but it was like, amazing. Like, it was cool that fact that I got to go ahead and meet somebody I looked up to for so long, and I was like, oh, okay. I just, I couldn't, I was left speechless. I still left speechless. Like, the man's amazing, humble dude. I just wish I could have, like, sat there singing a lot more songs with him <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was cool that you guys yeah no sorry i was just gonna say it's cool you guys hit it off so well i didn't know you guys had like a dinner thereafter and everything but that's sweet man oh, we had the dinner before the concert I was like, yes this is dope <laughs> but i was all thanks to my wife she sat there and made sure we did everything so we could go ahead and uh, get ready for this let's go meet me on in person yeah, I love that. And I really do appreciate you making some time to talk today. I don't want to be taking up your entire night, though, man. I appreciate you making some time to answer some questions and all. So is there anything you may maybe want to add, like, as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up here, though, man? Nah, man, just make sure to tell everybody, be on the lookout for me to go out there and win my rising fight. I'm going to go be the more flashy and entertaining fighter that they've ever seen. And I'm going to sit there and be excited more to face off on somebody and talk to see them on the ground. See if I can do kind of like ninja style or anime versions because I'm going to be in the land of nothing but anime. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a stacked card when I saw it initially, like Ryzen 40 and all. But I mean, especially fired up when I saw this bout announcement. I mean, both you and Hideo Takoro are guys who I very much enjoyed watching over the years. So cool you're able to, you know, link up and get out there in the ring. But to reiterate, I really appreciate you making some time, John. And just, yeah, you enjoy the rest of your night too, man. Like you too, boss. Catch you later. <laughs>